I'm Anna. I'm Ben. We're Odyssey and welcome to our channel. Today we're watching Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, Episode 23. Uh, two things. Number one, I edited last episode of Jujutsu Kaisen. Congratulations. Yes and no. I got to watch it again. Congratulations. Fits okay. there. Number two, uh, in terms of our discussion, I think I was wrong with my uh, percentages of guessing what the interaction between Choso and Itadori actually was. I think that I was a little too uh, giddy on the thought that it was connected to the what happened to Toto. Mm -hmm. And this I think upon editing it and actually like watching the pace of it play out, it might be a weird narrative choice to have that be a lie yeah, or a piece of misinformation. Mm -hmm. Um so that's where I sit with that at the okay. moment. Number two, my friend Noah, my my best bud, was like, we, we don't talk about this kind of stuff because he he is like a big yeah. Jujutsu Kaisen fan. It's and limited. I don't... It's like, did you watch it? Cool. Yeah. Awesome. And he like, because I don't want any risk yeah. of any spoilers or anything. And for the first time ever, I think he accidentally gave me too much information. And that was, I could be wrong here. I hope I'm wrong here. Did you watch the finale of season two of Jujutsu Kaisen? And I was like, what? The finale? What? So there's a chance if uh, I might have misread the text, and I hope I did, that this is the season two finale. We were definitely operating under an assumption, possibly false last episode and watching last episode, that there was like more than one episode. 2425 is where I was thinking. 2425 is where... Our minds were at uh, compliments to a certain shot last episode. Uh, nothing has really captured me this the way that Red Scale has in terms of art. There was a lot of really great stuff with the Maharaga fight with Sukuna. There was some really great stuff in there, but then the shot last episode of Miwa, who that was up whew, there. That uh, was beautiful. You can't forget the Jogo Sukuna fight too, especially at the end when the aspect ratio changes because there are so many like iconic not only compositions this season, mm -hmm. but the way that they're handling color yeah. is next level. The Miwa shot, I have been heavily debating making it a desktop background. <laughs> I've been heavily debating that. You should do it. I should. All right, you ready? Yeah. Sweet. Okay, that was Jujutsu Kaisen, the season two finale. I guess a couple things right off the top of my head. Coming into this episode, just recently hearing that this is and might be the finale, I guess it makes sense narratively that you'd have to end it in a yes. way that we completely lost because you couldn't have wrapped everything up you in a victory. You could have had some epic saving of Gojo fight in one episode. Yeah. That would have needed to have some type of special 45 minute or movie type episode. I, I just don't know what the fuck we're doing now. <laughs> like I like I like I feel like so hopeless even though but i'm so excited like this is like groundbreaking for me unpack, this is new territory i need to unpack why i feel hurt okay so okay gotta unpack this gotta understand how i'm feeling uh after watching this i almost feel like i want to just kind of get up and walk out of the room and close the door and like not think about it because i there's a few things that have happened in the end of this ep this episode that because of my baby heart, I don't want to see and don't want to have happen. Not because it's not good narratively. Of course, yeah. I'm not talking about that. It's more like my poor little soul doesn't want to see Itadori being... Uh, needing to be executed again and that Yuta's the one that is the execute. There's things that have happened uh, at the end of this episode and the episode entirely that I, my little, my little naive, gullible, uh, the tiny little 
baby inside of me that doesn't want to see anything bad to the comfort characters. Like, Ichidori is a comfort character. Is like, no, let's not have anything like this happen. I, I prefer when Itadori is like, it's only kind of like, a slight risk that they might want to n- execute him again because Kusakabe bringing it up in this season, but it would never actually happen because we're going to save Gojo. Like, my hopeful, wishful thinking has been crushed. This and is I'm one like, of the best arcs of anime that I've ever seen in my entire life. I, I bet, like, they've tied so... What they've done is is ridiculous in how they have managed to tie Yuta back into the story. They've brought the execution back. Back. The entire... With it having, like, reason or meat that we can understand as viewers why the Jujutsu Society and or as what the public would need is someone to be punished or the society would need to have someone to blame and punish and the risk might be too great. Like, I, we can understand, like, their thinking while also tying together and bringing new information in terms of who the villain actually is, Mm -hmm. but also who our main character might actually be and and how they're connected to them. Fushiguro's sister. Dude, okay. That's been like a little tied element since the beginning of this series. Like, okay, what the... Like, I think at one point in watching season one, speculated i speculated and obviously you didn't answer and i didn't know if that's because you because we watched it where i hadn't seen it and mm-hmm. you had and i wasn't sure if you were answering me because like later on in that first season we find out or if you actually genuinely didn't know like the truth of her situation either yeah and we did speculate at least i did a little bit about what that could be but i am so at a loss for the information drops and how that. it's all she intertwined. Woke up. What does that mean for Megami right now? What's Megami feeling about Itadori being a criminal? What, You're not supposed to go after Gojo. What does f- fake Ghetto, aka what Kamo Noritoshi, mean about like like what's the implication of what the people who he cursed will do to each other in terms of trying to get more cursed energy and turning into a thousand Yuji Itadori's? Like, is there something more than just human nature that's going to push them into being malicious? Like, hmm. okay, he used the word uh, malevolent. Yeah, right? malevolent. So, okay, I I guess I can understand. That there would be the thought that Itadori uh, is is a risk to have alive, but I raise you the fact that Ghetto is saying he's going to unleash like a thousand versions of Itadori, and I think I might want to take the risk of having one that might be on my side. But then again, it seems like there's some politics at play. We saw a lot of um, we saw a lot of like different people receiving the news and talking about it, and one of those was like in a boardroom that they were talking about more like a political nature of the whole thing and so i wonder if like in terms of like jujutsu society and politics there needed to be a punishment there needed to be a person that uh was held accountable for this and that okay. is why let let me just make sure i've got this correct season one jujutsu kaisen ends we see Toto being part of an audience to recommend that our main characters, as well as our friends that we've made along the way, are going to be moved up in grade. Mm -hmm. And that's a victory. Yes. Season two of Jujutsu Kaisen ends, and our main character is a war criminal. (laughs) Our OP teacher is also a war criminal who is in prison. Imprisoned forever. Yeah. Inumaki's lost both of his arms. Fushiguro, I'm assuming, will be either taken care of or caught up with whatever the fuck is going on with with, his sister. Nobara's dead, or probably dead, or close to. don't know about Maki. Toto has lost a a hand. What the fuck (laughs) has happened? Like, where the fuck are we? Okay, so, firstly... I, I I'm I'm probably wrong here. I but in my mind, it is just credit and 
oh my god to the quality of writing in terms of like the fallout here because we didn't have an entire sub like a section of this episode explaining how people got to these conclusions but let's just say that you are somebody who has heard that the body of ghetto has been spot spotted you don't know any fucking crazy Kamo lore and the brain swapping you see that gojo was apparently in a similar place an old as associate of ghetto you connect those two dots and going to be in some false assumption that they're working together oh if gojo was like malicious the entire time then the person the curse that he saved from execution is going to be part of it too. I'm not saying that that is like what played out or mm -hmm. happened behind the scenes. I just but feel as like people don't have their priorities straight. I mean, if a giant blackout and basically outbreak of cursed spirits is happening, I don't think you have your priorities straight if you're like, let's execute the principal. Going after Gojo is a crime, and we're gonna kill Itadori. So too. do, you, so the people making these like rules, right? Yeah, they're these, in some room somewhere, all safe. Do you, but do you think it's all like? Do you think it's like a malicious like a uh, means means to an I think end? They're scared. Do you think it's a scared thing? Do you think that they logically came up with these deductions and assumptions based off of not being able to hear anything, but? Like yeah, what they I, have. I think that uh, it's one of those things where you weren't in the room where it happened. And so if, if there's someone who has a malicious intent or a bias that can sway the conversation one way, because there isn't someone to defend themselves. There isn't a yeah. voice of someone else to defend themselves. The principal can't defend Gojo's actions or his own for sending Gojo there because he wasn't actually there in the fight. He didn't hear you know, what Gojo and Geto talked about. And and same with, like, Itadori is we don't actually know about the cutting off of Inumaki's arms because, like, does Inumaki even know or are we so, just blaming it on yeah. Itadori slash Sukuna? Like, who is the one that is uh, giving the facts here? So, Whose mouth did it come from? Yeah, like, in, in asking that, like, I was going to pose the question of is this, like, is this a a narrative that we are, we as in Itadori and Yuki and the principal are like, okay, well, we have to go with this for the time being until we can save Gojo. Like, it, like Yuki is involved in the last scene and granted, I guess she did just show up. So she would be lacking information, mm -hmm. but I don't know. Like, like it, but she's much more as, as she, we know her as a character that's not totally in line with what Jujutsu's like society is thinking and doing. Yeah. So we know her as a character similar to Gojo that they are going to do what they want to do and they have their own opinions about things and it doesn't necessarily fit what the like people in charge are thinking or doing kind of outdated, maybe thinking and, or I don't know, but Yuki is an outlier in terms of what side she'd be on, who she'd help, and when she would help them. I'm obviously not the best at this as of recent, but like at like taking what somebody's told me is just the truth that it is. Mm -hmm. It's just so hard for me to believe that Tsukuna or uh, Tsukuna using Itadori's body cut off Inamaki's arms. Uh, like, Dude, what? Where's Choso? We didn't hear anything about Choso at the end of this. I, we got told about so many different characters and what they were doing or what happened to them. And we heard Yuki say something like uh, about taking care of the kids, which I'm going to assume is like the other Kyoto, the Kyoto school. Yeah. Uh, but what about Choso? Where's we, he at? I want to know. We could be living in a season three of Jujutsu Kaisen where Itadori and Choso are brother vigilantes. Dude, that would like make my it, life. Okay, so if I'm hurt, you know, and upset that, you know, that, um... Itadori, Inumaki's arms are cut off? Oh, well, no, <laughs> I, I was gonna say Itadori. That Itadori is seen as a criminal, like, yes, that hurts my heart, but if that means that I can have an arc of him and Choso uh, bonding and being brothers and vigilantes together and saving Gojo, then I am totally, I think I'm okay with it. I think that softens the blow a little bit. I think that that, that makes it worth it to me. I... Uh, do you think that in any portion of season three, we're going to see a flashback or a memory of what happened in the fallout? I think that that's possible. 
I I do wonder how they're gonna go about a next a next season. I, I could see a fallout aftermath type of movie. Like I could I, I could possibly see a movie happening next. Mm. Just in, in it seems like there needs to be like a polishing up of like what has happened and now how are we gonna fix it? And I feel like that could fit in a movie format. I think it totally could. But, but I don't I, know how much content is there, obviously. So it could I it think could that, not fit. I think that it doesn't have to be though, because of them ending it with a skip of time. I feel like that that would be the perfect like like season three starter that time is passed here. Right. And I guess I just can't imagine aftermath. like a season where it's like 23 minute episodes of like Itadori being on the run and like eating, I don't know, random food that he has stolen from convenience stores that are abandoned. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't I know you. how I can imagine this more <sighs> apocalyptic feeling uh, pacing. I think it's more the pacing. I can't well, even gauge what the pacing of another season after this would be like. Do you want to know why I have trouble doing that? Because I have no fucking clue where we're supposed to go from here. Like, when I try well, to imagine- I think that we're supposed to go to a place where Itadori doesn't die. That's what I'm thinking. But, like, in trying to determine, like, how pacing would play out and what it would be like, you need to have, like, a, a plot a plot in sight. A yeah. goal in sight. And I think our guess would be- that Itadori and whomever would be trying to save Gojo. Of, of course, but we don't know details of how difficult that that would be if we need to track Ghetto down to a certain extent. What do you do after sealing Gojo in the prison realm? Do you hide the prison yeah, realm and then protect it? Like, what? Like we don't know. We're about to go on a quest. But in but within that quest is so many uncertainties that I have no fucking clue where we're like where like the next. I'm not saying that like oh I don't know what the next season finale could be because that could be a fight to try to release mm -hmm. the Gojo. But I don't know what the next three episodes, seven episodes, we've, ten. Like we've I, also added more uh, categories of enemy. So. Before, in this season, we had enemies like uh, Jujutsu Sorcerers that were evil, you know, not aligned with us. We had Cursed Spirits. The, that was the, the enemy categories. Now we have the possibility of past friends like Jujutsu Society, evil Jujutsu Sorcerers, Cursed Spirits, and possibly like the public. Because there yeah. could be wanted posters for Itadori. Like they could be even <sighs> using the general public and population to try to be on the lookout for him. I we could have any, we have all categories yeah. of enemy now. I weirdly enough, like in watching the scene with the girl in the convenience store, which was fucking awesome. What like it gave me the, the type of feeling that I had when I first watched episode one of Jujutsu Kaisen, when I first saw that fucking creepy curse like fucking with Itadori's friends, like unconscious bodies, mm -hmm. like, and like how scared that they were when like they were hiding from it in the room. And it like brought, like brought me all the way back full circle to like roots of this series, which is just incredible in trying to take a turn into a new season and arc. Mm -hmm. I like cannot tell you enough how much it means to me when the end of an arc is able to seamlessly connect and be a through line to the next arc. And it's it not just, oh, crazy. happy ending, and right. then a, like a reset, you it's know? Like, while the things that are happening seem so insane, it's not that they are narratively crazy. It's not that they don't tie back to what has already been established yeah. and, and what has already been given to us. It's just that like, it's things that we hadn't put together because we didn't write it and we are not so clever. Like, and we are, we just didn't imagine that this is what happens. And for me, a lot of that not, Im not imagining is that I come from a place of still believing this naive thought that at the end of the day, the main character protagonist, they might fall, but they're going to get back up and everything's still going to be okay for them. And they're still going to be, uh, have friends and be accepted and, and they're going to be able to fight and win next time. And, and the, this blow is just so much bigger than I expected the blow to be. I think that it's based off of previous shows that we've watched mm -hmm. or like in our own time, right? 
because even when devastating things happen, most of the time it's in the same arc or the next few episodes after that devastating thing that there might not be a perfect solution or everything is back to normal, but it gives us a little bit of that. And this, is, right. yeah. I, I feel like stereotypically, I would have expected this, whatever happened in this, ep like the beginning of this episode to happen three episodes before the end and the whole end would be saving Gojo. That's what stereotypically yeah. I would have expected for the end of this season. I am so, I love Jujutsu Kaisen so much. I, the, it's so original and unique. I love the style of characters and the animation and the coloring. And I am sad at the moment because I'm realizing that we don't have another episode after how, this. How long do you... I don't know how long Jujutsu Kaisen season one to the movie to this. Why do I... I feel like maybe 2019 feels like good for a guess for either the movie or season one. But I don't actually know when they came out. I'm pretty certain it's late... Definitely later than that. I could be I just completely want, I, wrong. I have no idea, I'm to be scared. honest. I'm yeah. scared. I don't want to wait a crazy long time. Oh, this is 100% going to have to get rewatched. Yeah, but like I... This, this whole season, or even season one and this, before for sure. any new content. Definitely the movie, well, too, for you to... That's what we always do. Like, at the moment, our reaction to Jujutsu Kaisen Zero is copyrighted. We're trying to get that fixed. But before we go forward into any like new season of a show, I, you and I both find it really important to whether it's a rewatch or just thoroughly look through like our notes that we've taken all season, we want to be extremely immersed into the world that we're in while reacting to it so that we know characters names and every, you know, but um, I've really, really wanted to read off these like rules that were given Even or they're like gonna the, hurt me. the, yeah. Uh, the facts, the, the facts, facts of the, the matter. matter. Apparently. Ooh, okay. Suguro so Ghetto's gonna... survival was confirmed. We hereby declare the reinstatement of his death sentence. That's so interesting. Because, like, what do you, you get so much from that, potentially. Like, nothing confirmed, but the idea that the people who've, who've written these rules or these statements down are either operating under the assumption or portraying that they're under the assumption that nobody, has, that Kamo is not a part yep, of this yep. at all they're it's ghetto they're either high trying to hide okay there's a couple things it could be they're trying to hide it uh-huh they don't know about it and they don't believe it to be true uh because this fits their narrative better they're obviously already putting a lot of thought into something like the public's gonna know about cursed spirits so they're and and how they're framing that so it could be an off a branch of that yeah uh, I think that they're just Gojo haters. I think that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think there's some bias here. Okay, because, like, think about Kusakabe was our character that from really getting introduced to him, he very clearly was for Itadori's execution. We know that he was there during this fight and probably survived it, I would say. And he he and a few other characters would totally be... They were all there for the Kamo reveal. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even Kamo himself was also there. So you'd think that uh, that information would have been spread. I mean, Utsuhime was there. Yeah. I Number two, really, like, is a big wow to me. Satoru Gojo has been deemed an accomplice in the Shibuya incident and is hereby expelled from Jujutsu society. In addition, any attempt to free him from his seal will be deemed a crime. Now, how the fuck do you get to the conclusion that Ghetto and Gojo are accomplices, but Gojo ends up being sealed by Ghetto? Like, okay. you obviously have to, like, if you're the person trying to shape and make these rules, you're going to you're have to do some, some jumps. Like you wouldn't be suggesting that Ghetto was the one to seal Gojo then if they're accomplices, right? No, you're going to you're going to assume that Gojo was too soft hearted, didn't actually assure that Ghetto was dead, and that is why Ghetto is actually still alive, and that is why he was an accomplice to this incident. But that then Ghetto, once getting what he wanted, was able to. Uh, uh, be a traitor to Gojo. Yeah. 
That's what you would, I guess, gymnastics wise assume. Or like, like just spitball random, probably wrong. You assume that this is a long con mm-hmm. and that Ghetto and Gojo have, like, have been accomplices for a while, you know? And yeah. If you know nothing about mm-hmm. the characters, you, you know, uh, you might come to that conclusion. Or you just hate Gojo. Yeah, if you're a Gojo hater. Gojo hater. Masamichi Yaga is sentenced to death for inciting Satoru Gojo and Suguru Geto, causing the Shibuya incident. Yeah, I, see, he I was don't know. the teacher, right? I don't know how they uh, got to that, how they how they went there, but they obviously I, are doing a lot of work. But would it not come from a point of view of being like, okay, well, this was their previous teacher, and it could be some master plot where he perpetuated the friendship and plan of Gojo. I'm trying to look at this from a point of view of people who have, no, have never watched the show. You know, like, I know, the people but then who... I would be like, but there were only three people in a little group together. So obviously Gojo and Geto were going to spark a friendship. Yeah. Who's, whose fault is that, really, actually? I I I, may, I I don't know I. Can, and it then, just seems like there's someone here that just has a lot of time on their hands, <laughs> a lot of hatred, and it is has some type of goal themselves yeah. that is not necessarily morally good. The suspension of Yuji Itadori's death sentence is hereby revoked, and his execution shall be carried out promptly. Now I wonder what. A face-to-face interaction between Yuta and Itadori really would I be never like. wanted to see it at odds. It's just, like, knowing just a little bit about Yuta from the movie, if there was an actual conversation between the two, I feel like it'd be a lot... It, and words were spoken, like, more than ten words each were spoken. It would have to be, I would feel, like, com- pretty complex. Like, what they're... What, they'd be talking about and Yuta's observation of Yuji like like obviously he's been given a mission and he's willing to do whatever is asked of him but Yuta's a pretty fucking smart dude like he he could he looked at that girl's shoes and was like okay yeah she's been running for a while I the harshness in the look that he gave the uh not real camera basically giving us yeah. in his like he's dead set on it dead set on being his executioner and i i feel like they've kept him in a room where he hasn't talked to anyone maki must actually be dead inu maki must be kept in a room where he can't actually talk panda must be kept away toto must have been toto and you to have a connection no one's getting to talk to yuta they're they're keeping him separate from everyone who loves each other but yuki it seemed like yuki and yuta were in a similar vicinity, or at least talking about each other, or she was talking about him, right? Was she talking about him? Oh, and now in hindsight, I'm thinking she was Itadori? talking to Itadori. Maybe. At first, I thought, like, during the episode, I thought she was talking to him, but I actually think that she might have been talking to Itadori, because she yeah. would have maybe gotten him out of there. And she... Okay, let's read it, yeah? Okay. Fair? Yeah. Um. So, we're getting this... While just seeing that Yuta was somewhere else. Yeah, first of all, I fucking love Yuta. Yuta's so cool, and the idea of Rika being here, too, is fucking crazy. I was a little bit of a question mark with the ending of the movie, how how they were going to progress, but it's so cool that Yuta was even covering this girl's eyes from mm-hmm. seeing anything horrific. Um, okay. okay, so, from Yuki's mouth. I'm sorry, I hesitated. I thought I should sit back and watch and give him room to work, since the situation had already progressed so far. Have you realized yet I'm not really on your side? I'm just a humble beauty who wants to eradicate cursed spirits from the world. It might not be much of an apology, but my allies and I will take responsibility for delivering the kids who were there. Who's she talking to? It's high time I confronted Tengen, too. Don't we see her? What will you do? I feel like she... I feel like she might have been... It's a toss-up. I don't think she was talking to either of them. 
Maybe. Maybe I don't know. Maybe she's talking to me. What will I do? <laughs> but, it, okay, in giving him room to work, since the situation has already progressed so far, I, like, I'm thinking that potentially ghetto and the interaction that was happening prior to this is what she was mm-hmm. talking about. Like she could have stepped in sooner. Yeah, maybe that's a possibility. It's a theory. But when she says my allies and I will take responsibility for delivering the kids who were there, that comes off, a, could be coming off as weird. If she was talking to Itadori, I feel like the language would be different in terms of Not delivering if she's the like kids. a different faction. And she's like, oh, those other kids that were there, I'll take care of them. She gotcha. doesn't know them, True. really. Like, she hasn't You're been right. around and bonded with them. Interesting. She had some LaRue. Yeah. Lar- LaRue. Oh, my God. He cut off Inumaki's arm. That is so fucked up. Inumaki should be okay. Like, the, all that, that would have done, I would imagine, is taking away the megaphone from him, right? Yeah. Like he'd he can still, still be able use to... cursed speech. Yeah. I just, I feel so weird. I don't want to wait. I feel like that Yuta is probably going to have to be, if he's the executioner, I feel like he's being kept away from everyone who has emotional ties to Itadori just to keep his, uh, no, bu- like get rid of any bias. Like he doesn't know Itadori. He's not going to be hearing any stories of how much people love Itadori. We have to kind of keep him separate so he can do his job. Like, that's how I'd imagine that whoever gave him this task would want it to be operated, like, to keep him in isolated. Does, like, what does Yuta, like, what is Yuta's opinion on Satoru Gojo at the moment? Does he have any doubts of what's being told to him? And if so, would Satoru's, Satoru Gojo's decision of keeping Itadori alive be enough to, like, sway Yuta at any point in the future, you know? Well, he would have already known that Gojo wanted to keep Itadori alive, but it obviously didn't sway him enough to not declare that he was going to kill Itadori. Yeah. So I don't know what it would take, and I am scared. I and think I don't want to see Itadori be hurt or in trouble one of the craziest things this episode to me was how the idea of what ghetto's body and how his abilities pre what our previous understanding of and how he would utilize curses how that's been like twisted on its head in such a degree that he's able to utilize things like mahito and trying to get jogos as well it, it's fucking crazy to me i dude i i don't know what else to say i one of the Hopefully best seasons we'll of be, anime I've ever yeah. seen, hands Hopefully down. Hopefully we'll be back to watch more Jujutsu Kaisen content in, in not too far in the future. Hopefully not too long. Uh, but dang, I don't really know how I feel. We right always now. talk about it, but I really would love to to like go back and do like favorite moments or mm-hmm. like highlights of this season and like revisiting them in terms of like understanding, but then just like applauding what is in front of us i i thought it could be cool if we had my friend noah come on and Ooh, talk to us a little bit about it but that could also get into the realm of he might know too much or oh, yeah. understand too much because he's in like fan communities and stuff mm-hmm. and we are in nothing but in each nothing. other <laughs> <laughs> oh my god dude 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 okay all right I guess that's all I have for now. I think so. I like Yuta's, or, uh, Yuji's scars. Yeah, me too. Scars okay. on a character's cool. Yep. All right, you good? Yes. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. <laughs> Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we hope to see you next time. He's in fan communities, but we're in each other. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs>